Hey honey, I broke my glider. Can you fix it? Where's the rest of it? It's all right there. Why don't I believe you? Oh, well, I guess there is this piece that's missing. Can you fix it? Okay, so we're um, here with one of uh, one of my catapult gliders that Caleb flies a lot, and he beats the snot out of them. And the latest is a complete just removal of everything here on the leading edge. So what I'm going to do is show you how to fix a rather nasty piece of, of damage. So pick a, a piece of wood that's larger than where you're intending to fix up, and then you can just kind of trace in here. And if you cut into the existing wood on the wing, so you can see right here, I'm actually removing some of the material where it's where the break is not a clean vertical. And I'm not going to continue back here because that's for the basswood leading edge. And now we will initially cut this larger than it needs to be. Hopefully I got all of that. Maybe not. We'll find out here in a minute. Again, it does not have to be perfectly exact, but basically we're just um, replacing the wood that's been lost. And we're going to cut this oversize and we're just going to sand it back in. Um, I'm sure some folks have different methods, but this is what I've been using for the past 20 something years. So. Um, I'm disinclined to change from it. So we're just going to take some CA. And this is a piece of 332nd. The wing is um, less than a sixteenth of an inch thick at this point in the uh, airfoil. So this is greatly oversized. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of just attempting to whack this back. This grain is not straight in this uh, scrap piece of wood, so... Um, this is proving a little challenging. The grain is angled down, so if I cut from this direction, I end up going down. This way, I end up... the blade gets kicked out of the wood. There we go. That's more like it. And we'll kind of repeat that process up on the Top of the wing, maybe. That's my cookies. Are those your cookies, Caleb? Mine. Are you sure they're not mine? I think they're mine. You're eating cookies. You're eating cookies? You sure you're not eating my cookies? My cookies. No, my cookies. Now, here, we're level with this basswood leading edge, and I want my basswood leading edge back. So I'm actually, I'm going to make a little bit of a cut here to pull this back into that, like so. And then we're going to fare this whole thing back in. Now, the other thing is you want to avoid uh, actually cutting this all the way back, um, or airfoiling this all the way back down because you want to airfoil it together with your basswood leading edge to get a, a nice clean result. And there we go. Um, I think this is a piece, there we go, a piece of basswood. And so we're just going to nudge this back in here. I'm just going to glue it along here first, and we'll see why in a second. And then, pull it back against here, hit it with a razor blade. And 
Now, I'm going to come back under here. You can use a razor plane for this um, to get everything just right, but I'm going to repair this small. Don't really need to. Then we'll come up from the top. of sealant. I'm still not all the way down here. Uh, you can seal with whatever you want, like dope or whatever. I am sealing with CA. I'm sure that if Lee Hines sees this, because I actually I do talk to Lee uh, periodically, um, he will have a heart attack. Maybe I shouldn't let him see that. I don't want him to have a heart attack. And I, I need him around as long as possible to tell me all his secrets. But anyway, this is my crazy methodology. And almost good as new, you go repaint it, what have you. Uh, what you can repair and what you can't repair. So. This is uh, one of Caleb's gliders. It's been smack broken in various places along its length. All that's easy to fix. Um, why did I put penny planes on top of my gliders? I am an idiot. Um, oh, that was brilliant. Penny planes are a little bit trickier, but no. They're... Yeah, uh, this airplane ran into the side of Lake Hurst going about 30 or 40 miles an hour, uh, which gouged things up pretty bad here. I'm in the process of that repair. Uh, gouge things up there. Major repairs back here um, have been done along the way. Um, I'll show you something that looks really, really gnarly. Um, this airplane had its tail shredded. Just ignore the, the mess on the building board. Yeah, we gotta fix that. Um, you can see that's been pretty heavily damaged. Uh, this is still a competitive airplane in spite of all that. Now, why I say what you can repair versus what you can't repair. So I can repair that. Uh, I got a giant ding there I've got to repair. That's your fault. It's your airplane. I gave it to her. Um, he flies it better though. Whatever. Um, Tails this size, you can repair without them warping badly. Um, a lot of your indoor gliders, especially your really light ones with thin tail surfaces, um, you're not going to repair that in a way that's going to be satisfactory. I mean, it's going to warp. It's going to be ruined. If you can repair it, uh, or, or if you're going to try repairing it, use like um, Elmer's white glue because that doesn't shrink too much as it dries. Uh, but any of your water um, water resistant solvents, CA, etc., you try to repair a, uh, a lightweight glider tail with that, it's you're not going to have a usable result. So anyway, um, hope that helps somebody figure out how to repair their uh, their busted up gliders. And um, yeah, there's almost nothing on the in a, in a competitive environment. Even with tail surfaces and whatnot, there is nothing you can't repair back to the point of at least being competitive on the day of. My take on it. See y'all later. Okay, so we we did let, leave you hanging a little bit on this broken up Hulk. Um, this is an example of a if you have it on the day of competition, and I mean you've gotta gotta fly now. 
you can fix it. But so this type of thing is not repairable in a, a, a long-term manner. Um, you're going to add a lot of weight back to the tail, and worst of all, um, you're, you're going to be in a situation that Daddy, the... Daddy. Hold on a minute, Caleb. Hold on. I know you do. You want one? Never mind. Um, the, the thing is, we've got glue everywhere here, and the, the, the weight just keeps climbing, and it's warped. It's never going to be straight again. Um, a little bit of backstory on this. This was Hope's first uh, Cat's Meow glider. And this is the result of shooting it. Don't worry, it's been replaced. Yeah, she built another one because it was just like, that's not going to... That's not going to buff out. Um, but anyway, so what we're doing here is I'm just fitting everything back once it came. Um, and I'll show you a couple of the pitfalls in this. So this type of thing... Hold on, you never did tell the story. Well, I'm, I'm being derailed. Uh, so basically here, make sure this goes back in roughly where it nested from. Because you're dealing with wing alignment. Wing tilt, not a big deal, but the, the up and down. Um, and I'll show you in a minute why that may not be as relevant as you thought. Um, nose alignment's not critical. Side to side is because it acts like a forward rudder. But up and down, not so much. Simply because you don't have any flying surfaces connected to that. Shh. Not that that's going to have any effect at all. And then I'm just sighting down the, the fuselage here to make sure. Um, wings are warped a little bit, but this is the, the vector board, so it's prone to doing that, and it, it buffs right or bends right back. Um, things that are a little less forgiving are stuff like this, because I don't have any good reference for alignment. So this involves entails, quite frankly, a total retrim of the airplane. Um, now you can, I mean, there are ways you can set a ruler on this or what have you, and you can get it close. It's never going to be exact. Um, so you, you were asking for the, the backstory on this. Um, Hope was out flying this airplane and doing very, very admirably well with it. Um, and was getting, she was coming up on, uh, she was doing about 28 seconds on average under a uh, 26 foot ceiling and was not getting all the way up there and so she decided she wanted 30 seconds and she planted it in the ceiling except it didn't stick it bounced off and pieces came off with it namely this which you now having watched this video know how to repair um, however um, that then resulted in this attitude straight down into a concrete floor. And that's why, uh, you, you know, it's, a, a, it's always a good crash when um, instead of stuff just doing, you know, crumpling into a mass, you see stuff bounce up. And that's what happened. Um, so anyway, this is, I mean, this is technically back to, you, you know, you can fly it. It's not going to be competitive anymore, but you can fly it. Um, on the day of, it might be able to be nursed back to competitiveness, uh, but the issue is it's going to warp over time. But, I mean, that's, that's enough that you're going to get decent flights. And if you haven't got any flights on the board, um, anything's better than nothing. Um, but I, I'd say there's still going to be probably about a 5% loss of performance. That's just, just my take on it. And now there's going to be more loss of performance. But, anyway, I tried. So, questions, comments, comment section below. Uh, this is not a guide for, com for repairing composite airplanes. I am not responsible for any damage you may do to your airplane by following my awful methods. See y'all later.